and uh, I'm going to discuss um, early diagnosis uh, of glaucoma with pattern electroretinogram. Uh, we've been using the pattern electroretinogram, the PERG system from uh, Diapsis for a few years now. We're uh, getting more and more experience with it. And I think, um, you know, as a glaucoma specialist, we're uh, and also as being becoming an older glaucoma specialist, the, um, you know, we're seeing these patients years and years out and we're coming to realize that we really would like to be treating these patients earlier and earlier. And I think uh, really uh, part of the symposium is designed to uh, help um, convince you that, you know, that early treatment I think is the way to go uh, with these patients with glaucoma, especially since they're living longer and longer. Um, so we, we need uh, tools to, of course, detect glaucoma earlier, and of course we, we have been developing these tools uh, over the years. Um, as we know, um, we have s subjective tools to evaluate glaucoma, uh, such as fundus photography, uh, and also visual fields. These are subjective uh, um, tests. And as we know, the visual field, uh, by the time you get a visual field defect, uh, most likely 50, there's 50% 50 of the ganglion cells are actually lost before you even detect a change. So this is a you know, visual field test which we've been using, of course, years and years, um, and it's been the mainstay of our um, uh, diagnostic technology, is really a relatively late uh, technology for detecting glaucoma. Uh, OCT, of course, is the uh, uh, first uh, structural uh, technology that we use, and it's, uh, it's uh, truly an objective technology looking at the structure of the uh, retinal nerve fiber layer and retina. Uh, but we don't really have any objective measure of function until other than actually electroretinogram. So electroretinogram really is an objective measure of the uh, functional uh, workings of the, uh, retinal, of the retina and specifically the retinal ganglion cells. So we're hoping to use uh, this objective measure to help us as a, basically as a complementary test to all our other uh, tests to help in, uh, in, in, our, in the management of, our, of glaucoma. So the diapsis has an uh, office-based system, and as you know, uh, electroretinogram and electrophysiology as a whole has been, usually been relegated to the university setting. Uh, with large systems requiring, you know, requiring uh, room, darkened rooms, et cetera, and uh, separate technicians. Well, this system has actually uh, been designed to work in the office. Uh, we'll discuss some of the indications. It's quite easy to use. Your technicians can do the, uh, perform the test. Um, usually takes around uh, 15 to 20 minutes per test. Um, it's non-invasive, of course and uh, it produces a standardized report. We have, uh, there's, a, there's a, a, a standards uh, and, normal, and normaliz normal uh, curves, uh, normalization data for the, uh, for the uh, test. Uh, the the uh, technology does use a proprietary uh, sensor underneath the lid, and for those of you who know a little bit about electrophysiology, uh, in the past it required either this gold foil uh, being put under the lid or a, a contact lens pl being placed on the eye. So again, it was a relatively complex procedure. So they've uh, uh, simplified that by using these, uh, these ERG uh, pro uh, sensors. So the pattern electroretinogram, as you see, is really uh, it's an objective measure of retinal ganglion cell function. So we're looking at the, the signal that is generated is at the retina, and it's generated primarily by the retinal ganglion cells. Uh, the patients look at this uh, stimulus monitor, and then uh, using the electrodes measured around the eye, we can uh, measure the signal from those cells, which is shown here. Um, it creates a, a pattern, a waveform, uh, shown here, and what we're getting is a sort of sort of a sinusoidal waveform, which is a normal waveform here. Um, and uh, one can consider the retinal ganglion cells. There, each of these are basically electrical stimulators. So each cell is its, in, is its own electrical st stimulator. So dependent on the quantity of those cells, as well as their quality, in other words, how healthy those cells are, you get a given signal. Um, and uh, you get something like that, which would be a normal uh, PERG, steady state PERG signal. 
Now, if those cells are not working together, working well, or they're asynchronous, um, then you get a different set of uh, signals, and you see an abnormal waveform, uh, which, they, the, which we can basically quantitate. And what the report looks like is something like this, in which you have, let's see if I can get this to work, um, a magnitude, the magnitude, which is again the retinal signal, uh, magnitude of the ret retinal signal uh, shown here, and then uh, a parameter which we call magnitude D, which is the a retinal single signal with influence of this intrinsic variability, basically uh, indicating the sort of health of the cells, how well they're working together. Uh, ideally, this magnitude versus magnitude D ratio should be about one. So if it's lower than one, then one, uh, then those, it, that indicates that those cells have reduced intrinsic variability um, and, or increased intrinsic, uh, reduced intrinsic variability and basically those cells are, uh, can be quote unquote uh, sick or suffering. So why measure retinal ganglion cell loss? Well, I think really uh, uh, glaucoma dysoptic neuropathy is fundamentally uh, a result of the retinal cell, ganglion cell loss, progressive retinal ganglion cell loss. So that's why not measure that. And this is, shows the spectrum of uh, glaucoma disease. As I indicated, when, we're at, when we see visual field changes, we're really at this end of the curve. Um, where already significant damage to the retinal ganglion cells have occurred. You've lost 50% of your axons and many of your retinal ganglion cells. Um, OCT, of course, is detecting changes earlier, changes in the retinal nerve fiber layer, uh, really indicating that those cells are lost. The retinal ganglion cells are no longer present. They're absent or dead. So we get a reduction in the retinal, retinal nerve fiber layer thickness. Well, PERG is looking at this even earlier, looking at how healthy those cells are, how functional those cells are, before the cells actually die. So the idea is, of course, that if we can rescue those cells earlier, treat earlier, detect this earlier, then we can, of course, treat the, treat the disease earlier. And so the, the name of the game is detect earlier and treat earlier. Um, the PERG indications are, uh, again, primarily for uh, glaucoma and maculopathies. Again, it's looking at the retinal ganglion cells in, uh, in, in, the, in the retina. Um, and it's really most useful, uh, I think its greatest advantage is in the early stages of the disease. It can be used at all stages, but it's, it's I think, advantages is in the early stages. Uh, looking at patients with the glaucoma suspects, preperimetric uh, open angle glaucoma, ocular hypertension, et cetera. So as I indicated again, uh, it detects changes earlier than OCT visual field. Uh, those uh, uh, those uh, structural tests can only tell you that the, that the uh, cells are either present or gone, alive or dead. What PERG is telling you is that those, those cells are basically under stress or suffering, but not yet uh, have, it, have they been lost. Uh, so the idea is again, treat early and detect early, and detect early and treat early, and then our treatment options, SLT, drops, or surgery. So the Academy of Ophthalmology uh, states that PRG may improve the ophthalmologist's ability to recognize early glaucomatous visual function loss in patients considered to be glaucoma suspects. And there's, several, there's many papers out. This, I think, is one of the more important papers looking uh, by uh, Porchetti and co-workers co-workers looking at early glaucoma detection. Um, these, those patients who are glaucoma suspects, the PERG anticipated equivalent loss of OCT signal by several years, as actually as many as eight years previous. And I think the important point was the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness did not actually decrease until there was a 50% reduction in the PERG amplitude. It sounds a little bit like the visual field. When you have, when you have a visual field defect, you've already lost 50% of your neurons. Likewise, when you have a change in your PERG, a 50% reduction of amplitude, you're, you're again at that point developing retinal nerve fiber layer loss by OCT. 
Also, they show, this paper was interesting and showed that IOP lowering can improve retinal ganglion cell function measured by pattern electroretinogram. And I think this is also important that these were, pa these were patients with preperimetric glaucoma. Um, they, they treated these patients uh, such that there was a 30, at least a 30 percent reduction of intraocular pressure. And uh, this resulted in significant IOP lowering, improved the PERG in these patients. Now just for a, um, a case study, uh, this is a 64-year-old female, visual disturbances, um, family history of cancer and glaucoma, visual acuities 2025-2030. Intraocular pressures are 25 millimeters of mercury right eye, 24 millimeters of mercury left eye, normal um, pachymetry. Fundus exam, normal cup to disc ratio in each eye. Diagnosis, glaucoma suspect slash ocular hypertension with a family history. Um, you, you, you know, we see these patients typically, this is a, a FDT showing really probably essentially a full FDT in this case, both eyes. Uh, o, uh, HRT and also just taking a look at the, you can see the picture of the disc, you know, basically a, rel a healthy disc in each eye, rel uh, normal. HRT. We didn't have the OCT in this patient, but I suspect it's normal. Um, so the patient, uh, they decided to treat this patient given the intraocular pressure. So we performed a pattern electroretinogram. And as you can see here, there is a um, reduction of the amplitude in the, in the right eye, borderline changes in the left eye. Um, the ratio is actually abnormal, it's low, uh, suggesting that although uh, the patient doesn't have any uh, uh, changes uh, on the visual field or in the HRT that this patient, uh, these cells are probably under stress. And given a pressure of 25 millimeters of mercury, you know, one may or may not decide to treat this patient. But it was decided to actually treat this patient. Um, let's see here. And um, 180 degrees it was performed in each eye. And uh, two months later, the intraocular pressure was reduced to 16 millimeters of mercury and there was a uh, significant improvement in the pattern electroretinogram uh, in both the right and left eye, uh, with actually improvement in the signal shown here, and uh, improvement in the uh, magnitude D and the, and the ratio. Again, uh, suggesting that uh, by treating these patients, lowering their intraocular pressure, that we can actually, one, measure changes in the pattern electroretinogram, and we're doing a sort of a larger scale, multi-center clinical trial, uh, at this point as well, and that we can, uh, by treating these patients, that we can hopefully improve their R RGC function and hopefully reduce uh, progression long term. Um, I think we have enough time, I don't know, very little time, but uh, this is a patient with uh, another patient um, with, uh, with asthma, hypertension, diabetes, night vision problems, visual acuity 2025 in each eye. Uh, pressures are 22 and 23, again, a slightly increased central corneal thickness, normal cup to disc ratio, diagnosis glaucoma suspect. Series of fields shown on the left side and the uh, right side, but basically normal. FDTs. Some suggestion that there may be some, sorry, that there may be some um, changes in the uh, uh, nerve in both eyes, superiorly and inferiorly but still overall looks relatively healthy. So they, dis they performed uh, a uh, pattern electroretinogram on this patient as well. Uh, the right eye is actually normal, but the left eye shows a significant reduction in the amplitude and the magnitude D and, and uh, uh, abnormal ratio. Uh, it was decided to uh, basically uh, treat these, this patient given the abnormal uh, pattern electroretinogram um, uh, given the history, I, they, they elected to treat both eyes. And three months after SLT, uh, again, there's an improvement uh, in both the right eye with an in, actually increase in um, amplitude uh, in the right eye as well and normalization of the PRG in the left eye. So I think uh, we should really consider these technologies and begin to embrace these office-based technologies for early detection of glaucoma. I think it, it does help us in the management of the disease. I think we have a lot of these patients. 
Uh, we can't present them all here in this short period of time, but you know, I have patients who are myopes and patients with low tension glaucoma, all these different groups of patients that uh, we, you know, we have a sort of a hard time discerning how to, you know, should we treat, should we not treat? And I think this is a great complementary test that uh, helps us uh, in, uh, in the management of this disease. So again, I think we should begin to use these tests uh, and implement early glaucoma treatment. And then we'll discuss in the next session uh, using SLT as primary therapy. Uh, thank you very much.